Hey, did you know that as much as 88% of Americans are suffering from some degree of insulin resistance? Diet and lifestyle are critical drivers of insulin resistance, but the underlying root causes are broader and include stress, inflammation, and chronically elevated insulin. There are several factors that contribute to this condition, so we're about to take a closer look at some of the causes of insulin resistance to arm you with the knowledge you need to set yourself up for metabolic success. All right, my name's Austin, and if it isn't already clear to you, insulin is a pretty big deal. It's an important hormone that stimulates cells to take sugar from the bloodstream to be used for energy or stored. But in the case of insulin resistance, cells essentially become numb to the effects of insulin. That means your body needs more of the hormone to do the same work, which enforces a pretty self-destructive cycle. Now, I know it's tempting to say to yourself, this is all because of sugar. And while you wouldn't be totally wrong, the problem is actually more complex. Let's look into three primary factors that are direct causes of insulin resistance. The first, hyperinsulinemia. Hyperinsulinemia is a technical term for an abundance of insulin. It may sound weird to hear that too much insulin can cause resistance to it, but that's the truth. In fact, just a small change in blood insulin levels can have a person experiencing approximately 20% increase in insulin resistance. Many factors can cause an abundance of insulin, including an abundance of glucose. One of insulin's main jobs is to regulate glucose in our blood. So when there's an excess of glucose, your body produces an abundant amount of insulin in an attempt to clear your sugar from your blood. Glucose levels are primarily driven by what you eat and exacerbated by lifestyle factors like poor sleep, too much stress, or too little exercise. Stacking those three factors on top of the standard American diet is a surefire way to experience chronically elevated levels of insulin, which ultimately leads to your cells becoming insulin resistant. The second primary factor is inflammation. Inflammation is your body's natural defense system and is necessary for the survival of our species. This occurs when your body perceives a threat and leaps into action by sending proteins like tumor necrosis factor to the affected area. The problem here is that these proteins, which can be so subtle that they're almost undetectable, have been shown in studies to interfere with insulin signaling, ultimately contributing to insulin resistance. And finally, stress. We're all familiar with the common reactions to stress. Elevated heart rate, sweaty palms, fast breathing. That feeling when you're running late to something important or even when a parent gets a phone call from their kid's school are examples of times where you might have experienced stress. In these kinds of situations, your body releases the hormones cortisol and epinephrine that engage physical responses. This results in a rapid, sustained rise in blood glucose. And if you were actually in a threatening situation, it will be helpful. The problem is that when we experience stress in the modern world, we don't do anything with the extra energy our body just gave us, like using it to run from a vicious animal. This forces insulin to work hard to lower blood glucose. So if you're in a state of chronic stress, you're continuously exposing your cells to insulin, which as you know by now, will eventually lead to insulin resistance. So those are the three primary factors causing insulin resistance, but a secondary cause for the phenomena may be lurking in your diet, which is the wrong fat. These days, most people get their dietary fats from processed seed oils like soybean oil, which is the most common fat source in the American diet. Producers enrich processed seed oils with linoleic acid, which we store within our fat cells. When we consume too much linoleic acid, its metabolic byproducts force fat cells to grow not in number, but in size. These enlarged fat cells can cause leakage of fats and proteins, which impairs insulin signaling, and you guessed it, can lead to insulin resistance. Okay, I know hearing all of these causes for insulin resistance might feel overwhelming, but don't stress. That'll only make things worse. Instead, I encourage you to read the full length blog post in the description of this video because having a better understanding of this condition will leave you feeling equipped with the knowledge you need to avoid insulin resistance and inch closer towards optimal metabolic health. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.